global adventurer and filmmaker Marlon Dara journeys across the world's most beautiful countries and cities. You'll explore breathtaking landmarks, art and architecture from the Caribbean, Europe, Central and South America, and so much more. Immerse yourself in the local culture, history, and beauty as you follow his endless journeys of adventure every weekday, only on Cayman 27. Let Elite Marble and Granite bring the charm of Italy to your home. Made from only the best materials. Santa Margarita Quartz is handcrafted at a state-of-the-art facility located in Italy and then journeys across the ocean to Elite Marble and Granite, who is the exclusive distributor in the Caribbean. Elegant and resistant, Santa Margarita Quartz products offer a large choice of colors, textures, and exclusive finishes. Call 945-9028 or visit us online at Elite.ky. Elite Marble and Granite, where perfection costs less. If it matters to you, it matters to us. We're Cayman 27, Cayman Informed. Coming up next, National Roads Authority Managing Director Paul Parchment is fired and one crime victim. It is not a, a good position to be in. And one crime victim speaks out after her home is burgled. The big week for Stingray Swim Club continues as another athlete heads to the NCAA. And the radar's picking up some showers in the region, but the Cayman area is looking all clear. I'll have a weekend forecast for you that you don't want to miss. Cayman 27 News is coming up next. back sign up for the sports pack today and fuel your passion for football sports is life only on flow whether you want to get going in a new car to relax at home while you pay bills on your mobile banking app to get the best rewards with your credit card or to get a sure start on your little one's future whether you want a quick response on your loan or just a range of services that keep your business running smoothly. You want banking that fits your life. CIBC First Caribbean. Banking that fits your life. Let Elite Marble and Granite bring the charm of Italy to your home. Made from only the best materials. Santa Margarita Quartz is handcrafted at a state-of-the-art facility located in Italy and then journeys across the ocean to Elite Marble and Granite, who is the exclusive distributor in the Caribbean. Elegant and resistant, Santa Margarita Quartz products offer a large choice of colors, textures, and exclusive finishes. Call 945-9028 or visit us online at Elite.ky. Elite Marble and Granite, where perfection costs less. You're watching K-Man 27 News, K-Man Informed. Brought to you by Foster's Food Fair. At Foster's Food Fair, we care. Flow. The governor also outlined the benefits of a, a joint initiative between the UK and Cayman, which will see the purchase and operation of a second helicopter to assist the RCIPS Air Operations Unit. Mr. Roper announced the plan in his address on Monday and today clarified why he believes a second helicopter is important. I think this is a, a really positive uh, development because to have a to have a second helicopter will make a, a huge difference to, to law enforcement capacity and it will make a huge difference if there are um, sort of disasters and crises in the region in terms of the ability to support um, other 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 territories so I think this is a a really positive um, story and again a, another really good example of where 
that the UK and Cayman Islands working together really can make, uh, make very effective progress. <laughs> And in just under a week's time, we will have the new Cayman governor on, live on Cayman 27. National Roads Authority Managing Director Paul Parchment has been fired. This morning, the NRA board announced his termination effective October 31st. His dismissal comes several months after the board launched an investigation into possible misuse of NRA resources by a senior employee. Edward Howard has been performing the duties and responsibilities of the managing director in the absence of Mr. Parchment. And the board has appointed him acting managing director with effect from today until a permanent appointment is made. Two men have been arrested on suspicion of assault with grievous bodily harm following a violent altercation and collision Wednesday night on Shedden Road. The two are believed to be involved in an incident that left one man in hospital. According to police, the victim sustained a laceration to his head after a machete attack Wednesday night at a Shedden Road bar. They say the man fled the scene and was later hit by a car. He is in stable condition and the two suspects remain in police custody. After her home was broken into several weeks ago, one victim is speaking out. Patsy Cottrell says since the incident, her family has been traumatized and she has a message for the burglars who, who stole her peace of mind. Cayman 27, Seaford Russell Jr. has more on the story. Homeowner Patsy Cottrell lost more than material things when her Bodentown residence was broken into several weeks ago her family's peace of mind. It's very scary. It is not a, a good position to be in. She says her daughter-in-law and her newborn baby were at the home when the burglars broke in. So it was very scary for them, and it was no male in the house, just them, and she was sick, so. Ms. Cottrell says her daughter was woken by the thieves. So she just kept looking, and then when she looked, she saw the door was open. And she looked outside, she didn't see anyone. But on the video, you can see them running, and they ran right through the back door. She says they got away with some of the family's belongings. They left with only an, uh, a broken cell phone that needed repair and a hoverboard for my son. Ms. Cottrell says, judging by the movement of the burglars, they knew what they were doing. It's obviously they're combing out places that they want to rob, you know? and they wait until your, your, your no vehicle is in the yard. Because we watched the camera and we saw the footage where they, they watched and they saw the last car drove off. She says she wants those thieves to take a hard look at their lives. My message to them would be to get help, because help is out there. If they're unemployed, they, we have places for them to go to seek help. If they're strung out on drugs or whatever, we also have places available for them. She's urging those involved in criminal activities to choose a different path in life or serious penalties will come their way. Seaford Russell, Cayman 27. Cayman's new governor, Martin Roper, laid out his priorities for his new post and addressed topics from Brexit to LGBT rights today. This as he spent the morning of his fourth day in office talking to the media about some of the biggest issues facing the country. Cayman 27's Caroline James was there and she joins us live now with a recap of the governor's first media briefing. Uh, so we might have a package ready. Uh, in this Up first was beneficial ownership, something Premier Alder McLaughlin has railed against, calling it constitutional overreach. Mr Roper addressed those tensions, stressing the importance of all countries being on the same page when it comes to a beneficial register, from overseas territories like Cayman to Crown dependencies as well as other sovereign nations. In terms of um, looking at the timescales for when that happens, um, the UK's view is it's very important that others, which includes the Crown Dependencies, it includes other, other countries, move at the same speed. So we want that to happen before um, a territory like the Cayman Islands has to introduce um, um, a, a beneficial register. Relations with Britain in terms of the push for constitutional change were up next. 
the Foreign Office in London has already said that it would be willing to listen and is open to, to receiving ideas. Um, the Foreign Office has also said that it does believe at the moment the, the current balance of responsibilities in the Constitution is about right and it thinks the 2012 White Paper uh, sets out um, a clear and fair um, balance of responsibilities. But, but we are open to discussion and open to ideas. The Governor stressed the importance of equality for all, but he wouldn't be drawn far on the matter of gay marriage. He said it wasn't right to interfere while the challenge brought by Chantal Day okay. and Vicky okay. Bodden to <laughs> Cayman's same-sex marriage ban remains an active lawsuit. Right. I, well, I think the, uh, it's a matter, at the moment it's a matter for the courts. There's a case before the courts, so we have to wait and see um, what, um, what happens after that. But what I think is important, certainly for, from, from, from my perspective, is rule of law and that, and that we, we, have to, we have to comply with the law. So I think we need to wait and see um, what um, the outcome of that, that case is. And lastly, he tackled Brexit. He said it wasn't a case of out of sight, out of mind for Cayman. The Governor and the Governor's Office have a key role in understanding what is happening in the, in the Brexit uh, negotiations so we can um, assist the local government and everybody here understand the implications of that. Um, the, the government is, is still confident of, um, of getting, a, getting a deal um, with our European partners. Um, negotiations and discussions continue. Um, there, there have already been discussions with um, our overseas territories, uh, governments about Brexit. <laughs> Mr Roper also reiterated his hopes that his tenure would last longer than the minimum six to nine months initially mandated, enough time to effect real change in his new home. And now we have Joe Avery with a check on weather. Hey Taylor, how's everything going today? Gorgeous day out there today. I hope you got out there to enjoy it. You know what? <laughs> I did. Who says I gotta stay over here? It's kind of a big studio. I wanna come hang out over at the desk. Yeah. We got a lovely weekend on tap, barely a chance of rain. By the time we get to Sunday though, we could see a stray thunder shower though, but anything you wanna do, if it's outside, in the water, it's gonna be a amazing weekend mm -hmm. for all that kind of stuff. But I don't want to blow the entire tease right here. I've got plenty to talk about in weather, and I'm going to join you guys a little bit later in the show to kind of wax poetic about this changing of the seasons that we see as we switch from October to November. You guys don't want to miss that. Thanks, Joe. And after the break, government's Smith Cove redevelopment plans get a rejig. The Department of Environment urges caution on Cayman's roadways as a blue iguana is run over. Ghouls, goblins, and everything in between hits the streets last night. We have our Halloween highlights. That and more after the break.
Georgetown South MLA Barbara Connolly says controversial plans to enhance Smith Barkadier have been revised after considering feedback from a public meeting back in July. Cayman 27's Joe Avery is still here with us in the studio and he has the details. Thanks, Taylor. Plans for Smith Barkadier redevelopment were unveiled to mixed reactions at that contentious meeting back in July. In the months since, Ms. Connolly and the Enhancement Committee have gone back to the drawing board, making some big changes to accommodate community concerns. Some infrastructure upgrades have already moved forward. This week, a new pedestrian crosswalk that you see right here was installed on South Sound Road at Smith Barkadier. Safety to me is paramount in terms of for our people, for our visitors and our locals alike. One of Grand Cayman's best loved beaches has just become more pedestrian friendly. Georgetown South MLA Barbara Connolly says the new crosswalk is a major safety upgrade for Smith Barkadier. There is an issue here on the South Sound Road and I've gotten many complaints from my constituents that of the of the traffic and of the speeding in this area. The pedestrian crosswalk is among several Smith Barkadier enhancements introduced at a public meeting back in July. Others include a new car park, new restrooms, and Iron Shore cabanas. But Ms. Connolly says revisions have been made to incorporate public feedback. Some of our people weren't happy that we may have to cut down some of our trees and in fact there were a couple of our indigenous trees that were there. So we changed the plan so now the car park is actually going to be closer to actually to the end of the parcel. She says placing the car park along the northern boundary of the property also preserves the view from the roadway. If we had put the car park at the front of um, the road out here, um, we wouldn't be able, people crossing in their cars or walking would not be able to appreciate the view. Um, of the water. And while the new pedestrian crosswalk is one small part of a bigger project, Ms. Connolly says it's a small step to improving Smith Barkadier for everyone. It's taken quite a bit of time, but at the same time, I'm so pleased to see that it's actually become a reality now. Now, Ms. Conley says in addition to moving the car park from uh, right about here to along the northern boundary of the property, the revised plans would also include a wooden deck or platform kind of toward the end here where beachgoers could get a great view of the sunset. She didn't indicate if the controversial Ironshore cabanas remain in the plan. Ms. Conley says the committee is scheduled to meet again this week, but there are unlikely to be any more public meetings on the plan. In the studio, Joe Avery. Cayman 27. Just weeks after installing signage warning drivers to look out for endangered blue iguanas, a six-year-old breeding male is killed on the roadway. The Department of Environment says the total of five bi-directional warning signs were installed in East End along the Queens Highway and Sunnyfield Road. The DOE says there have been at least four blue iguana road deaths this year. We only get uh, the information that people or the general public hand us, right? So that means that a lot of blues could be killed on the roads and removed by predators, dogs or night herons or feral cats, say. So we always consider the actual information uh, with a grain of salt. We're probably only seeing the tip of the iceberg. The DOE says the driver of one of its vehicles witnessed another vehicle accidentally run over the male blue. And switching gears, the Family Resource Center is partnering with the John Gray High School Boys to Men program to make a short documentary film in honor of Men's International Day. The film will focus on what young boys think that the qualities a man should possess. The Family Resource Center program facilitator Anne-Marie Diaz says acknowledging men is very important. It's very important that we address our boys and our men's issues. We've been making great strides in terms of gender equality, in terms of women's issues, which is incredibly important for our society. Um, but an unfortunate side effect has been that our boys and our men have been ignored. Um, and our, our boys and our men, they're suffering, you know, and our prison is overflowing. Um, there's young, young people not uh, accessing mental health services. Or the movie Men's Voice will premiere on November 19th at Kamana Bay Cinema. And Jordan Armaniz is up next with a check on sports.
Thanks, Taylor. The Cayman Islands Aquatic Sports Association is seeing their swimmers head to the collegiate ranks at record numbers. And another swimmer this week, specifically from Stingray Swim Club, is adding to the total. That's two this week already. We find out who it is coming up next. Bogle Insurance Brokers Limited are professional independent insurance brokers established in 1988. We are a wholly Caymanian owned insurance broker with a wealth of knowledge in the local and international insurance market. Our professional team service clients with a range of insurance products including motor, home, health, contractors, marine and business insurance among others. Contact us at 949-0579 or email us at service at bogleins.com. Make the most of your morning at Burger King with Burger King's unbeatable breakfast special. Two Chris sandwiches for just $4. Take two bacon, egg, and cheese Chris sandwiches, two sausage, egg, and cheese, or mix and match. Add a refreshing OJ or delicious hash browns, plus tea or coffee for a true breakfast of champions. Two Chris sandwiches for just $4, available until 1030 weekdays and 11 a.m. on weekends. Only at Burger King, Seven Mile Beach, Waterfront, Walker's Road, Town Center Plaza, and now Red Bay. Cayman 27 Sports is brought to you by Elite Marble and Granite, where perfection costs less. All right, welcome back. We start in the pool. A big week for the Cayman Islands Aquatic Sports Association and Stingray Swim Club as a second swimmer announces their intentions to compete at the American collegiate level. It's 18-year-old Kenneth Glidden. He'll head to McKenzie University starting January. Now, Stingray already has two swimmers at that program. That's junior Cole Morgan and freshman John Bodden. We caught up with Glidden earlier today to get his thoughts on the big move. When I started in 2014, I wasn't even swimming the 200 breaststroke. I was just swimming the 50s and the 100s. And, um, but then I've dropped at least almost half a minute in the 200 breast. I've dropped nearly 25 seconds-ish in the 100 breast. And um, yeah, it's a, that's a, quite a lot of time in a, like a three years period. Now coming up later, we're going to hear from Stingray's head coach, David Persley, to talk about the club's recent string of success. All right, let's head to the track. Earlier this week, we showed you grenade and field coach Paul Phillip working with K-Man's youth throwers. Phillip says he's also been working with K-Man's top senior throwers as well. Now, an injury to national men's javelin record Alex, Alex Pascal at the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games earlier this year said Phillip worked with Pascal after the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games, and he's making improvements and hoping to build on his national record of 75.38 meters. In that short period of time, he would have been able to move from throwing 66 meters to throwing 73 meters. Um, it was a shame that he got hurt in the competition. Had he not had, had that not happened, he probably would have been over 75, which is his personal best, um, easily. So I think he's, he's, he's a very good talent. Now, Pascal recently threw 73.21 meters at the Central American and Caribbean Games. Philip said he's also working with Pascal's sister, Rachel, and national women's javelin record holder, Danellis Thomas, both of which were silver medalists in their last competitions. All right, week eight of the Cayman Islands National Dart Association Premier League is in the books with only one week remaining before playoffs. Let's take a look at the action. This week in the Cayman Islands Dart Association Premier League, the assassin Richard Campbell fell the second overall with just his second tie of the year, 5-5, against the punisher Earl Smith. Smith would get a win against Sniper 69 Paul Anglin in his second game of the night. He sits in third overall. 
The Hammer Hank Ebanks bludgeon the bull Eddie Ballantyne 6 0. He's now in fourth overall with just one week to go. Cliff Weeks would sting Neville Parker, who still searches for his first win of the season. Finally, Nozilla the Great Alzon Agcon punctured the tire of Hot Rod Rodan Asunzian 6 2 to claim first place overall in the standings. This is the Cayman Islands Dart Association Premier League, brought to you by Elite Marble Granite. All right, weather's next. Stick around. From happy beginnings and life choices that we make along the way. Brit K protects your lifestyle with the best insurance cover at the best possible price. Health insurance with far-reaching benefits. Family protection and long-term financial plans. Business insurance and generous employee benefits. For happy beginnings to happy ever after, visit BritK.ky. Brit K, where people come first. Get the quality, the service, the wide range of products in the BRAC. Everything you love about Paramount Carpets is now available on Cayman BRAC. Carpets, flooring, drywall, paints, windows and doors, lumber. From plumbing to electrical supplies, you'll find it all and a whole lot more at Paramount Carpets. Cayman BRAC. We do a whole lot more than just cover your floor at Paramount, Paramount Carpets. We're not just the most reliable energy service in the Caribbean. Whether it's for your entertainment, lighting a path to your future, or making sure that you and your family are secure. We're there for you when it matters most. Your safety and our reliability are our top priority. We are committed to remaining the number one utility service in the Caribbean. We are CUC. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the weatherman, so of course I'm gonna be talking about the weather, ladies and gentlemen. And hey, the, the radar picture right here, you can see we've got some showers in the neighborhood, not too uh, far offshore there, maybe 50 miles offshore. So you can see some of these showers uh, might be training their sights on the sister islands here if uh, these uh, wind directions are any indication that we can see right here with those showers kind of moving in on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. So sister islands, uh, keep your eyes out. You might be seeing a little something tonight. No guarantees, though. It is just a prediction. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow is Friday. Am I the only person stoked about that fact? I don't think so, guys. It looks like a gorgeous day for you Friday. One to three foot seas, slight seas out there, light winds. They're even getting lighter in the evening time. Five to ten knots at night, pretty still out there. 20% chance of shower, mainly fair skies for your TGI Friday. Looking pretty good. You know what's keeping it like that is, I'm going to take it back to this screen here, guys, because there's no no rules in here. It's like an Outback Steakhouse in the newsroom today because we've got no rules. I'm going to show you the satellite picture. You see high pressure, uh, a ridge of high pressure over the Northwest Caribbean. It's kind of melting away there, but we're going to have this beautiful weather at least through the weekend. Let me tell you a little bit more. I'm going to step over onto the weather wall here, do my strut. You know, we're all wearing poppies now because it's uh, November 1st. Uh, it's going to be great. Friday, like I said, fantastic day. Don't let that icon with the uh, raindrops there fool you you because National Weather Service says Saturday is only 30% chance of shower, maybe uh, partly cloudy skies at times, not as fair as Friday. Sunday, though, they uh, raised the chance of showers to 30% uh, with a chance, a possibility, a chanceability, if you will, of maybe a little bit of thunder showers on your Sunday. But hey, don't let that turn you off, guys. It's going to be a fantastic weekend. It's going to be warm out there, uh, maybe not as hot as we've seen in the melting, boiling hot of the summer months. You guys got to remember, it's actually 
late autumn, kind of mid-autumn. We're in that autumn stretch right now, but for the Cayman Islands, that just means breezy, breezy, perfect temperatures. No wonder people are going to be flocking to our islands starting uh, next week when the Pirates Week Festival gets going. So it's going to be an enjoyable time. Hopefully the weather is as good uh, for that and the rest of the ensuing uh, next couple months of 2018 uh, as it is for these next few days. Guys, it really is spectacular. Anyway, Taylor, that's all I got over here. I'm just yammering. It's really great out there. I could talk all day about it, but we have plenty more news, so I'm going to send it your way. Cayman's trick-or-treaters were out in force last night, many of them here at Kamana Bay. And what better way to enjoy those hard-earned treats than, than by settling in at the big screen in the Crescent. The movie on show, a Halloween favorite, everyone's favorite friendly ghost. And up in the second half hour of Cayman 27 News, we have some gentlemen from the Law Society and the Bar Association. And remember to WhatsApp us any photos, news tips, or videos to 527-2727. It's that time of year again for the annual Cayman 27 Parade of Lights, brought to you by Bogle Insurance Brokers Limited. We're calling all boats to join us Saturday, December 1st at Kamana Bay as the water comes to life with this year's theme, Christmas Around the World. It's completely free to enter, and there's a chance to win $1,000 and two general admission tickets to Kaboom. Or enter just for fun. Private and commercial boats are welcome. For more information and to register your boat, click on Cayman27.ky. A timely response, that matters. Owning your own home, that matters. Supporting our community, that matters. When your child smiles, that matters. Good encounters, great experiences, it matters at Cayman National. And the flavor, flavor with a big black thing that move up in that thing she. Every dance them flair, flavor with a big. Holy pastor, say we acting on the street. Young middle age are old, move your feet. When face the feet dance, everybody have to do it. Grace, feel the vibe, can't you feel it? Grace, delicious, so nutritious. Taste, quality when you taste it. Want affordable, look for the real. Flair, we are flair because the spice is clear. Flavor with a big, no other brand of the near way. One taste and you know grace is real. Champion House Restaurant, serving Cayman for over 30 years. Start your day off right with our breakfast, fruits, pastries, hot cereals, entree, and so much more. Stop by for lunch. Our buffet offers salads, soup, entrees, and desserts. Check out our website for details on our new dinner menu. And don't forget about catering. We can customize any menu to suit your needs. Champion House Restaurant, where the islanders dine. Welcome back to the second half hour of Cayman 27 News. I'm Taylor Burroughs. And the, the Law Society and the Caymanian Bar Association are merging into one representation body, and the Cayman Islands, it's called the Cayman Islands Legal Practitioners Association. Tonight, I'm joined with the association president, David Collins, and council member, Eric Bonin. So welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Well, why don't we just get, get started and you tell us about, about what this is exactly, why it's, why it's happening, and, and how it's going to work. Yeah, sure. So um, SILPA is the Cayman Islands Legal Practitioners uh, Association. It's a new body that represents uh, all lawyers and the legal profession uh, here in Cayman. Um, it's formed uh, by a merger between the CBA and the Law Society and it's the first time uh, in Cayman that the entire profession has been represented by one body, so Eric and I are looking forward to telling you more about it. I would suspect this is a much more efficient result, I guess, than having two different bodies or what's the expectation there? Well, I mean, I, th I think hopefully, yes. I mean, <laughs> the idea is to have it. Um, an organization that covers all attorneys on island rather than mm -hmm. separating them out into two separate organizations. Um, and hopefully in, in the end what we're trying to achieve is to have an organization that, that is, is, like you said, run more efficiently. You know, mm -hmm. we'll have an office, we'll have administrators and so on and so forth to help us um, properly tackle some of the government issues in terms of legislation and those sorts of things. 
And do you anticipate there being any conflicts at all in the interests of the two different parties working together? Not at all. Well, your lawyers um, know. This, so. is, <laughs> this is, is one association. Mm -hmm. um, and what's of interest to us now as we look to the future is that all lawyers uh, in Cayman, everyone in the legal fraternity, uh, gets involved and, and participates. Um, we don't see um, any reason why there ought to be different interests. The association is formed and is together to reflect the fact that you know our interests are the same and, and our interests as legal uh, professionals here are entirely uh, aligned. Mm -hmm. So what do you feel are going to be some of the agenda items like once you do merge? Are there any, any plans already in place? or? Well, at the moment, a lot of what we're doing, Taylor, is operational. So, you know, we're doing the mundane things like mm -hmm. uh, sorting the website, uh, opening uh, bank accounts. Um, looking uh, sort of ahead, we will have, we expect, a big role to, to train and develop uh, lawyers here, including uh, Caymanian lawyers. Um, we will have a role in terms of sort of AML supervision. Uh, there's a big role to play with supporting uh, sole practitioners and small firms. Um, we hope, uh, as Eric has said, that with a new transformed organization with a budget, we'll have a better platform to, mm -hmm. to drive forward some of these initiatives for the profession. Yeah, I can see how just joining forces and combining resources could be very effective. So I'm hoping that that's the, the positive result that you get. Now, I know that there's a legal practitioner's bill, and I'm not an, an expert in that area, but what, what, is, uh, what is your involvement in that right now? Well, at the moment, that's not a priority for us uh, at all. Um, our main priority is to engage with the legal fraternity. We want uh, the entire legal fraternity to participate in this organization because this organization is for them. We don't have a mandate uh, in relation to the legal practitioners bill. Um, in order for that to go forward, a few things need to happen. Uh, the government has got to come and say that there is a, a mandate to, to, to do it. Um, and we have to have broad support um, behind this organization in order to tackle a big initiative uh, like that. So mm -hmm. um, at the moment, uh, the Legal Practitioners Bill is not uh, on the, the top of the list of priorities. OK. And how long have you been involved in this association, Eric? I was just wondering. Uh, in the CBA? Mm -hmm. I was in the CBA. I think it's about two years now, actually. Yeah. Have you noticed any changes in the two years that you've been involved? <laughs> uh, yes, I think so. I mean. I, and I think that's partially what's been driving a move towards uh, SILPA. Mm -hmm. um, just a way of sort of rethinking and, re and shifting the narrative of uh, and how we're dealing with certain issues. Um, and I think, that's, I think SILPA is well placed to deal with those. And with the new merger, what would be the, the Caymanian demographic involved? So SILPA's constitution um, actually goes a long way to ensure that Caymanians participate at the highest levels within the, the organization. Mm -hmm. um, SILPA's articles um, presently contemplate that the president must be Caymanian. Okay. Um, a majority of the council members uh, must be Caymanian. Um, the, the articles also provide that uh, two of the council members must come from small firms, so fewer than 10 lawyers or sole practitioners, and those are usually Caymanian. So, the governance structure of SILPA is already set up to mm -hmm. ensure that uh, Caymanians can participate at the highest level, and we're looking forward to uh, our Caymanian lawyers being engaged and, and supportive and, and, and getting behind SILPA. The only way that I can really relate to it as a self-employed person is just how difficult it can be as a sole practitioner uh, to feel uh, isolated and not to have your interests represented. So I could see how that would be very important. Absolutely, um, you know, and, and sole practitioners need help in particular in areas like AML compliance and one of the things that we're seeing is that there is a lot of global regulation that is impacting uh, the profession here. Mm -hmm. um, many small practitioners are not well resourced to, to deal with that. Yeah. That's something that SILPA can, can help with. Absolutely. And do you, do you know of or anticipate any, anyone who might be opposed to this merger and there are reasons for that? Uh, I don't see why uh, anyone would be opposed. I'm not aware of anyone uh, being <laughs> opposed. Um, and you know, um, both Eric and I, um, we know the legal fraternity here well. And I think people know that um, if they have any concerns or if they want to talk about what the mandate is, our doors are always open. Um, I think it's important to say that 
we are an interim council, mm -hmm. which means that we will be working to have elections early next year, and anyone who's eligible to run and who wants to take up the mantle can, can do that. Well, I think that's a very welcoming uh, invitation for any feedback, so I, I appreciate you being here, and we'll, we'll end with that and uh, talk to you soon about the updates to your, your council. Thank you. All right. Well, stick with us after the break. We'll have more news, and don't forget to WhatsApp us your photos, videos, and news tips to 527-2727. Attention viewers of Canaan 27, the Truth of God television program with Pastor Gino Jennings of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ can now be seen exclusively in the Cayman Islands on this channel every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. You won't want to miss the dynamic preaching and teachings of Pastor Jennings as he speaks the truth from God's Holy Bible. Tune in every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. for the one-hour broadcast of the Truth of God with Pastor Gino Jennings exclusively on Cayman 27. Cayman Informed. It's that time of year again for the annual K-Man 27 Parade of Lights. Brought to you by Bogle Insurance Brokers Limited. We're calling all boats to join us Saturday, December 1st at Kamana Bay as the water comes to life with this year's theme, Christmas Around the World. It's completely free to enter, and there's a chance to win $1,000 and two general admission tickets to Kaboom. Or enter just for fun. Private and commercial boats are welcome. For more information and to register your boat, click on kman27.ky. We believe that every life matters and that we are all connected. One community, one people. We believe in compassion to give dignity to those that society has let down. We strive to conquer fear and we believe that the power to heal is a gift. This is who we are. This is what we believe, Holy Cross. Welcome back. Swiss scientists are using targeted spinal cord simulation, stimulation via an implant to restore limited locomotion to paralyzed patients who had chronic spinal cord injury, and they say it could help those confined to a wheelchair. Reuters' Matthew Stock reports. Until recently, this was unthinkable for Sebastian Tobler, crippled in a mountain bike accident five years ago. A spinal implant fitted last year acts as a bridge between the 47-year-old's brain and his paralyzed limbs, giving him back some control over his legs. So Sebastian basically had no ability to activate single muscles of both legs, what we say like a motor complete paraplegia. And now with some training, he's able to really trigger, like for example, the full leg extension of his leg. So he basically recovered a lot of control over the paralyzed muscles, despite you know, more than four years of complete paralysis. Grégoire Cortine's team and Lausanne University Hospital neuroscientists implanted spinal cord stimulators into three paraplegic patients. Paralyzed in 2010, 28-year-old David Mazé had his implant fitted two years ago. 16 electrodes connect the implant to nerve endings in his lumbar spinal cord. It delivers targeted electrical stimulation via an embedded pulse generator. Relearning to control his legs, though, takes huge concentration. It's really like, uh, like running a marathon and holding eggs in your hands and you're trying not to squeeze them. And at the same time, you're pushing as hard as you can. It's, I, I cannot compare it to any other training I ever did. Recent U.S. studies presented a similar approach to restoring limited locomotion in paraplegics. Cortine says their use of continuous electrical stimulation is a less targeted treatment. And what we do is that we amplify the residual command from the brain to trigger the intended movement. So basically, here he has full control over the stimulation and its output. So you can inhibit it or you can enhance the effect of the stimulation. This means it's really restore voluntary control over the activity of the paralyzed muscles. The researcher's startup, GTX Medical, is developing a tailored spinal implant. Those with the current implant are excited about their future. Up next, world news and stories from around the region.
Bogle Insurance Brokers Limited are professional independent insurance brokers established in 1988. We are a wholly Caymanian owned insurance broker with a wealth of knowledge in the local and international insurance market. Our professional team service clients with a range of insurance products, including motor, home, health, contractors, marine, and business insurance, among others. Contact us at 949-0579 or email us at service at bogleins.com. Three of the finest liquor stores on Ireland are located on West Bay Road on beautiful Seven Mile Beach. Tortuga Fine Wines and Spirits Governor's Square, the greenery near the Strand and Seven Mile Shops Plaza. Tortuga Fine Wines and Spirits boasts the widest selection and even offers free wine and spirit tastings at all Seven Mile Beach locations every Friday from 5 till 7 p.m. Family owned and operated since 1984. Welcome back. It's time for a check on Wall Street. Apple shares fell in after hours trading after the iPhone maker issued a weak holiday quarter forecast. Earlier, Wall Street rose for the third straight day. Reuters' Fred Katayama reports. Apple shares dropped after the market closed on Thursday. The iPhone maker warned sales for the holiday season could miss analyst expectations. Apple sold slightly fewer iPhones than expected in the latest quarter, some 46.9 million. But its average selling price was higher than anticipated. Earlier during the market session, defensive stocks took a back seat as Wall Street rose for a third straight day, up more than 1%. Industrial stocks rallied after President Donald Trump said trade talks with China were progressing, in his words, nicely. Strong earnings also boosted chip stocks. IHT Wealth Management President Steve Dudash. Whenever you see that 10% pullback, because it happens all the time, that's when you want to be allocating extra money into it. And that's what we do over and over and over again. So, yes, we've seen a nice run-up. Because the economy is doing well, because the market, the markets had pulled back so much. Alphabet shares fell. Over a thousand Google workers around the world streamed out of their offices to protest the company's handling of sexual misconduct issues. Dow DuPont shares jumped. The world's largest chemical producer's adjusted earnings shot up 35 percent. It also said it'll buy back $3 billion worth of its shares. In Europe, the major markets closed mostly lower, dragged down by energy stocks. In world news, the Times newspaper says a tentative Brexit deal has been reached and it will allow Britain's financial sector to keep its access to the European Union so long as their regulatory laws remained largely in sync. Reuters' Matthew Laratonda reports. Britain's big banks may have a Brexit deal to celebrate. British Prime Minister Theresa May has reportedly reached a tentative deal with the European Union. It would allow the country's financial sector to keep its access to EU markets for as long as regulations stay in sync. That's according to a report by British newspaper The Times, citing government sources. With only five months to go until the divorce, it might mean there's one less thing for negotiators to worry about. More money flows in and out of London than any city in the world. It's the global capital of currency trading. So some big banks have been forced to reorganize over concerns they'd be cut off if Brexit happened without a deal. Some have even started moving operations to other EU states. If confirmed, the new deal may also be seen as a victory for supporters of a so-called soft Brexit, in which Britain remains largely in tune with the EU. Sterling jumped on the news, gaining half a percent against the dollar. Over 1,000 Google employees and contractors in Asia and Europe staged brief midday walkouts today amid complaints of sexism, racism, and unchecked executive power in their workplace. In a statement last night, the organizers called on Google parent Alphabet Inc. to add an employee representative to its board of directors and internally share pay equity data. They also asked for changes to Google's human resources practices intended to make bringing harassment claims a fairer process. And in regional news, Peru's opposition leader Keiko Fujimori is returned to jail pending a trial over money laundering allegations. Prosecutors have accused Fujimori and her associates of laundering $1.2 million for Brazilian construction company Ode Bridge, which has admitted to bribing politicians across Latin America. Fujimori has repeatedly denied wrongdoing. 
And thousands of Venezuelan migrants have entered or are trying to enter Peru as they rush before the deadline for acquiring residency in Peru, which expires at midnight tonight. Thousands waited outside immigration offices just over the border from Ecuador as they rushed to file the necessary paperwork. Peru was one of the first countries to offer temporary residency cards for Venezuelans. And we have another check on the forecast for tomorrow in just a moment. at Popeyes, a different meal with side every day of the week for the same price of just $3.99. Monday is chicken soup with rice. Tuesday for the chicken bowl. Two tenders on Wednesday. A loaded chicken wrap on Thursday. It's all about that shrimp on Friday. Chicken nuggets to start the weekend and the mixed two-piece to finish. The new daily meal deals from Popeyes. A different meal every day served with the world of famous best dressed chicken for only $3.99. Only at Popeyes, Louisiana Kitchen on Eastern Avenue. Sometimes having a middleman is not a bad thing, especially when it comes to insurance. Do you know that when it comes to cost, ease, speed, and peace of mind, insurance brokers ranked higher than when customers buy direct? So, for all your insurance needs, call Fidelity Insurance. We're the middleman you want. Call us today at 949-7822. Fidelity, we're good for you. Let Elite Marble and Granite bring the charm of Italy to your home. Made from only the best materials. Santa Margarita Quartz is handcrafted at a state-of-the-art facility located in Italy and then journeys across the ocean to Elite Marble and Granite, who is the exclusive distributor in the Caribbean. Elegant and resistant, Santa Margarita Quartz products offer a large choice of colors, textures, and exclusive finishes. Call 945-9028 or visit us online at Elite.ky. Elite Marble and Granite, where perfection costs less. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We start at Smith Barkadier for our Cayman 27's Fisherman forecast tonight. We've got our low tide coming in at 11.56 p.m. tonight. Uh, and the one following, that's about 12 hours later around noontime. Your next high tides, 5.57 a.m. and 6.13 p.m. for your Friday. Anyway, let's get to the current conditions right now on our radar here. You can see we got some showers in the area. Like I was talking about, nothing very big and vast in terms of precipitation, but just something you need to know, maybe uh, affecting the Sister Islands or Grand Cayman uh, tonight, but only a 20% chance of showers for the rest of that. We're going to take it to the temperatures, though. That's one of my favorite things to do here in the weather studio. 86 in Georgetown. You can see it a little bit warmer than the last couple of nights. Let's see if the rest of the island is following suit. We've seen some uh, variance in temperatures. Uh, Georgetown's a little warmer. That's probably because we've got it going on here in the hot lights of the Cayman Bay studios here. Sister Island Let's see what they're looking like. A little cooler. Uh, nice odd number out there, 83 degrees. Hello to all my Brackers and little Caymanians watching. Let's take a tour of the region, though, and see what we've got out there. A lot of different temperatures from Santiago, Chile, 65 degrees right there. And you can see in Lagos, Nigeria, 81, a balmy 81, Miami, 80 degrees. Uh, I also see Quito, Ecuador at 63 degrees. Guys, it's a big world out there. A lot of different temperatures. Be glad that you're here in the Cayman Islands. Anyway, let's get a glimpse at the seven-day forecast to take you home. Uh, and it's looking great tomorrow, especially. A fantastic day on tap. Fair skies, 20% chance of precipitation. Uh, Saturday, it looks pretty much the same. I would uh, kind of ignore that icon there. Just a 30% chance of rain isn't going to wash you out for an entire day on your Saturday. Sunday, uh, look Looking pretty good as well. Kind of the same, partly cloudy, 30% chance of showers, but they've also added uh, the chance of maybe a thunder shower in that mix as well. By the time you get back to work, hey, it's just another day in paradise, guys. Uh, that's about it for me. I'm not sure if we do have a weather pick of the day today. I don't believe we do, so I'm just going to go ahead and say goodbye. Jason Howard will be doing your weather tomorrow. Caymanian owned and 
operated since 1967. Paramount Carpets is a full-service operation, beginning with material selection to the installation of finished products, as well as providing maintenance, service, and takes great pride in the quality of their work, making every effort to exceed customer expectations. Contact us today at 345-949-5000 or visit us at 317 Industrial Park, North Sound Road. Paramount Carpets. We do a whole lot more than just cover your floor. I'm Jordan Telford. I'm the master distiller for Tortuga Rum Company. I'm a born Caymanian. I'm very proud to say that I'm producing an exceptional quality rum that's uh, completely handmade start to finish, distilled, bottled, and blended right here in Grand Cayman for Tortuga Rum Company. Some say the time of miracles has passed, but we see miracles all around us every day. Some could not walk, some could not breathe. Some had lost all hope. But something amazing happened. Something that can't be analyzed or quantified. Something that is more than good medicine. Holy Cross. Now, Cayman 27 is bringing you live coverage of the University College of the Cayman Islands 2018 graduation after the news. Kevin Morales is standing by with an update on what's happening at the UCCI Hall. All right, welcome guys. We are live here at the Sir Vassal Johnson Hall on the UCCI campus. Tonight, 211 young students will be awarded during the commencement ceremony for the class of 2018. And Cayman 27 will be broadcasting it to you live throughout the entire event, courtesy of EY. Now we're gonna get started here promptly at seven o'clock. I'm told that hardly ever do they start um, after seven o'clock. So they're expecting that we're gonna be get uh, that we're going to get going on time here. Uh, so that's good. We're just waiting for the graduates are going to line up in the far corner over there. We are still waiting, I believe, for some dignitaries to get here. We're expecting uh, the Deputy Premier Moses Kirk Connell, the Premier himself, Alden McLaughlin. We're expecting uh, the Honorable Juliana O'Connor Connolly to be in the crowd tonight, along with the Tourism Minister. Uh, we've got Mr. Moses Kirk Connell and plenty of others. So I'm going to step out of the way here right now. As you can see, the Sir Vassal Johnson Hall filling up quite nicely. We got here about an hour and a half ago and started uh, setting up our cameras, running all of our wires, etc. And this, uh, not a single person was sitting down in a seat. But as you can see, maybe over the last hour and a half or so, uh, plenty of people have filled in. Uh, there's a buzz in the air. Everybody's excited uh, to see these young people being honored. They put in a lot of hard work, several years of hard work. And uh, we're also hearing uh, a video playing over the PA system internally here in the hall. And we're hearing a lot about uh, let this be the start of your educational journey, not the end of it. So I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more. Uh, of, of those types of messages and words of wisdom throughout the night. Like I said, we can expect uh, the Premier to speak uh, along with several other of our lawmakers and dignitaries here. Uh, Roy Bodden, the president of UCCI, is going to speak as well. So it's going to be uh, a really fun night honoring the hard work that all these students have put in over the last several years. So with that, I'm going to let it go. But please do stick around after this newscast uh, because we are going to bring you the commencement ceremony starting promptly at 7 p.m., exclusively brought to you by EY. Right now, I'm going to send it back to you guys in the studio. Well, it looks like it's about to be a full house there. And that's the end of our show. Stay tuned to the watch the graduation. Good night. From happy beginnings and life choices that we make along the way. Brit K protects your lifestyle with the best insurance cover at the best possible price. Health insurance with far-reaching benefits. Family protection and long-term financial plans. Business insurance and generous employee benefits. For happy beginnings to happy ever after, visit BritK.ky. BritK, where people come first. 
Make the most of your morning at Burger King with Burger King's unbeatable breakfast special. Two Chris sandwiches for just $4. Take two bacon, egg, and cheese cur sandwiches, two sausage, egg, and cheese, or mix and match. Add a refreshing OJ or delicious hash browns, plus tea or coffee for a true breakfast of champions. Two cur sandwiches for just $4, available until 10 p.m.